you once again for tuning in to KSU Gold. This show is being brought to you by Kentucky State University's College of Agriculture, Communities, and the Environment. My name is Lindsay McGaha. I'm a media manager here at Kentucky State University, and I'm your host. And on this show, we give our viewers a peek of our faculty, our staff, and our students, and their efforts to continue our golden legacy of achievement here at Kentucky State University. On today's show, we're going to learn all about Kentucky State's new 4-H Center, where we're teaching students all about the STEM curriculum. We'll also hear from a Frankfurt High School teacher and student as they discuss Kentucky State's new early college program. But before we get into that, we're going to hear from a student organization that's making a big difference here on campus. How are you all doing? Doing good. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Okay. So you all are part of the Kentucky State Circle K International Club. Yes, Tell us about that club. Well, uh, Circle K is a new organization we well, actually came about in uh, 2012 here on this campus. And basically it's just a foundation that we have that gives back to the community and to the school and uh, just to show how much that we care about our campus and our community. So. Now, are you currently the president? That's right. Okay, and what, what do you do as the president and what do you do as well, Christina? I'm the activities coordinator on, of the organization and I just pretty much come up with all the events that we'll do and get the other organizations and people on campus involved. Now, you're also very modest, too, because you recently came up with the new idea to create a food pantry here on campus. Tell us about the food pantry and why you thought it was important to create. Well, we were already thinking of coming up with something so that the students can have a pantry for when they're hungry or they need socks or they need deodorant and stuff like that. So I just thought of the idea of making it a big event and getting the other organizations involved to just help collect more stuff than what we would have just collected ourselves. Now, why did you think that was important? What made you come up with the idea? I came with the idea from the strength that we were trying to make it a big thing for us to have a lot of students, or not students, but a lot of, if I, <coughs> a lot of items for the students. And bringing the other organizations in helped a lot because we did get a lot of donations. Now, when did you all create the food pantry, and when did you actually get the idea started, and when did it actually come to fruition? We thought of the idea. I mean, <clears throat> we thought of the idea of the event all semester, and then we actually started the event in April, and we just got mm -hmm. the pantry. Now, Vince, tell us a little bit about some of the items that you all have collected. Um, we collected uh, drinks, uh, deodorant, socks, underwear. Um, and a lot of different food items as well. So it's a wide variety of things that the students um, have to pick from based on their needs. So. Now, where have you all actually gotten your donations from? Oh, we've gotten donations from students and, and other outside uh, people in the community as well. Okay, so mm -hmm. are they like organizations like banks or? We actually had a, um, a contest who could donate the most wow. uh, on campus in Omega Sci Fi Fraternity Incorporated one. So. That's awesome. So tell me about some of the success stories that you all have heard or some of the people that you've been able to help since you started the food pantry. Well, we actually um, got the pantry throughout the summer and we put all the items in there. So when fall comes in, we'll actually be able to help the students by giving them the items. Okay, so actually there haven't been any students that actually have, have gotten anything. You are actually collecting items now. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So how can a person go about donating to the Circle K? Well, um, you can either talk to myself, uh, Christina, or really any representative of Circle K International or contact our advisor, Ms. Irma Johnson. And you can uh, contact her via email at irma.johnson at kysu.edu and she'll give you um, any information that you need. Now, do you all have rules on who's able to come and how often they'll be able to come to the food pantry and grab items? Um, it's more of a be courteous for other students because we do have a lot of students that are in need on campus but there's really no limitations on how often they can come. Now you all don't just collect food for a food pantry, you all do a number of different things on campus. Tell us about some of the events and programs that you all have had. Um, actually starting last year which is when I really got involved with the organization, uh, we, had, we hosted a carnival, we called it uh, the Circle K Carnival. We had games, food, activities for the whole, all the students to participate, um, just to get the students out and really show what Circle K is about and what we're trying to do, not just here on campus, but community-wide. So, um, Also last year, we went to a regional meeting in Lexington, Kentucky, and we met with other schools in our region. Um, 
and we met with them about how we give back in our community, in our school, and they also gave us ideas as well. And we were also able to go down to um, the home and help clean sheets and uh, mattresses as well. So. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. You mentioned earlier that you worked with or other organizations to bring the pantry to fruition. What organizations did you all work with? Um, we worked with Kappa Kappa Psi fraternity. We worked with Tau Beta Sigma sorority. We worked with um, Omega Psi Phi fraternity. We worked with um, the Deltas and pretty much all the D9s. We also, I also went and talked to the President's Office in Hume Hall and I talked to Student Support Services over in ASB. Were there any challenges that you all faced in putting this together? Um, really just getting a location. So, um, like I said, Christina laid all the groundwork out. She was kind of the head of the operation, but uh, just finding a location was probably the hardest part. Okay, and where is the location for the food pantry? <laughs> the food pantry is actually in the student center. It's on the third floor. Um, the most challenge that we had with the whole event was finding a place to store the items until we did get the pantry. Now, when you all talk with your advisor and you brought up the idea of the food pantry, what's the first thing she said? I'm sure she was very proud of you. <laughs> she was really happy. <laughs> she um, liked the idea and she put me on the task of just getting the other organizations involved. And when we got so many items turned in, she was just like really wild. <laughs> That's wonderful. Now, there's a local chapter of the Frankfurt Kiwanis Club here. Mm -hmm. Do you all often work with the Frankfurt Kiwanis Club? We do. Uh, actually, Frankfurt Kwan sponsors us. So if we have activities we want to go to, they uh, pay for our international dues, national dues. So they're the big brains behind us. So anything that we needed to get it, need to get done or things that we want to get involved with, they help fund if we don't raise it on our own. Um, also, Tommy Haynes is the uh, our advisor from the Kiwanis chapter. And um, he, he so very often comes to our meetings to help out and offers all types of uh, information to help us. So. Now, are you a pretty large organization on campus? We are. Uh, we're growing. Last year, we had a lot more students. Um, a lot of them were seniors, so they graduated. But this, uh, this year, we have close up to 10 or 11 members now. So uh, it'll just keep growing, I think, when school starts. All right. And how can a student become a member of the Frankfurt Qantas? Well, for Quan Circle K International Club. Thank you. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Um, well, all they have to do, like I said in the beginning, is come to one of the representatives. So you can really, th the great thing is you can come to any one of us and ask us. Or like we said earlier, contact Ms. Irma Johnson. Um, but it's just, it's just reaching out, really. So you can always join. Um, that's pretty much it. And that's the same contact information to also donate food as well. Yes, ma'am. Or any type of items. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you all so much for being on the show. You all stay tuned. When we come back, we'll hear from Lewis Milligan, Jefferson County 4-H agent, as he discusses all about Kentucky State's new 4-H center. Kentucky State University faculty and staff's research projects and programs have been awarded over two million dollars worth of grants to further research in areas of science, math, agriculture, education, aquaculture, computer science, psychology, and sociology within this academic school year. here at Kentucky State University's new 4-H Center and today we're going to learn all about the center as well as the 4-H Youth Development Program. I'm going to turn my attention now to Lewis Milligan, an extension agent in Jefferson County who is over the 4-H Youth Development Program here. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Now you're pretty new to Kentucky State University. Tell us a little bit about what you do here. Uh, I'm currently a 4-H Youth Development Agent in Jefferson County where I provide uh, services to youth, hands-on uh, programming in schools, clubs, uh, community centers, churches throughout Jefferson County. Now we have extension agents in various agents in various areas of Kentucky. Why is Jefferson County so important? Uh, Jefferson County is important because uh, whether you believe it or not, Kentucky State has never had 4-H uh, agents in Jefferson County. So this is the first time KSU has had 4-H agents 
in that area. So currently we have two agents, uh, myself and my coworker, uh, Patrice, I'm sorry, Patrice, and we provide uh, services there. It's important because Louisville is an urban area, so they're not exposed to ag agriculture. So we're really trying to get them exposed to agriculture, STEM, and uh, all the other related programs related to 4-H. Now tell us who you service there. Uh, our primary focus with KSU's program is uh, underserved uh, youth who uh, traditionally don't get uh, 4-H services or 4-H programming in, a, in their community. So KSU's focus is, in Jefferson County is the underserved. So we really like to go into communities where uh, they've never heard of 4-H uh, and there is a need for, for programming. Now we've talked a lot about 4-H on the show. Give us a brief overview of what 4-H is. 4-H is a wonderful youth development program that focuses on uh, experimental learning through hands-on activities. Uh, it is in the past been club based but it has expanded into uh, a lot of areas. Communication, uh, STEM is a big fo focus and healthy living as well as other uh, programs. So that's the main focus. And this is a national program. Correct? National program. Uh, a lot of people have been in 4-H. I was in 4-H as a young kid in Christian County. So 4-H is nationwide in 50 states and uh, it's a very uh, well-established program, youth development program, and they've served uh, millions of youth. Now you mentioned STEM and you said that 4-H works a lot in the STEM curriculum. Right. Tell us how you all build programs around that. STEM is important because a lot of schools in Jefferson County and statewide and nationally are more of a STEM, science, technology, environmental, uh, and math. So the focus is, is trying to get kids more involved in those uh, fields of study and involved. So what we've done at KSU, we have went into robotics. So our main focus here is robotics. So we've, in Jefferson County, we've started robotics clubs in after school, and we've started robotics programs in schools through clubs. So uh, we're, it keeps us busy with robotics. So with robotics, they build robots. And so uh, each program, last six weeks. It has to last six weeks so these individuals build robots. The robots we have right now are EV3 Mindstorms. Uh, they have 513 pieces and they build the robot. Uh, they learn coding, programming, and eventually our next step is begin to take our kids from these clubs to competitions with the robots. So that's the next step. We're, we're at the step where we're building now and these kids can go to international competitions with these robots once they build them. Impressive. Very yes. impressive. Yeah. Outside of STEM, what other types of programs do you all uh, offer? Healthy Living is very popular in uh, Jefferson County because they have a lot of food uh, deserts and a lot of the underserved areas of Louisville with no grocery stores, no access to fresh fruit and uh, items. So what we're doing is we're going into cover, we're partnering with our uh, SNAP-Ed and FNET workers. We have two of those in Jefferson County, in which we partner with them and we go out to school and we teach healthy living, uh, cooking healthy, eating healthy. A lot of kids, you know, they want Cheetos, hot Cheetos okay. and, and a Mountain Dew and they think that's healthy. Well, we're trying to give them alternatives to eating that in the morning because a lot of the kids that we're dealing with they don't get breakfast, you know. Everything gets fast food because parents work and stuff. So we're trying to teach them healthy alternatives to the, you know, unhealthy lifestyle. You mentioned your partnerships with SNAP Ed, right. but Kentucky State University also partners with a number of different people. Tell us about that. Uh, well, this year we have partnered with uh, UK Extension. Uh, doing a farm field day, uh, a golf scramble that uh, is a fundraiser for KSU and also we partner with Community Center, Louisville Central Community Center, uh, Americana Center. My co-worker works for the Americana Center in, in Louisville. So we're trying to partner with many as many organizations we can because we're a volunteer driven program. So we're always trying to partner with organizations so in turn we can try to pull some volunteers 
out of them so we can reach more kids. If we have more volunteers, we can reach more kids and train volunteers to go out and do some of these activities with the kids. How have families in Jefferson County positively been affected by the programs that you all have recently established? Very positive affected. We've done a lot of summer programming and the, the, the feedback we've gotten is awesome. As a matter of fact, me and Patrice are a swamp with phone calls trying to get clubs and us to be in their classrooms uh, in Jefferson County. So currently we're working to try to get, I'm working on five schools that want our programming because we're work, focusing on STEM and healthy living. And that seems to be a focus that a lot of the educators want in their schools. So we work a lot with the Family Youth Resource Center uh, workers in the school system. Now, I mentioned earlier that Kentucky State University just opened its new 4-H center, which we're in today. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the center. Excited about the center. It's the 4-H center, uh, youth development center. It still has the Rosenwald name, which I'm happy about because my child was a Rosenwald uh, baby who is a freshman at Kentucky State now. So the 4-H center is big because this allowed us to reach more people in the community. Uh, in the center is over 15,000 feet, and we have different programs uh, related to the community. They're going to start robotics. They're already working on a STEM lab in here. We have an environmental lab, so kids can come in and learn uh, STEM activities. Uh, I think she's going to process of doing a science lab where kids have microscopes. Believe it or not, schools don't even have microscopes anymore. Kids are not even don't even know how to look at uh, organisms and stuff under microscopes. So we're trying to bring microscopes in the, in the schools. And this center right here has already reached a lot of kids. Uh, Dr. Walson's program uh, comes over here and benefits from the uh, computer lab. Uh, so there is a lot here that's going to be offered. It's just now getting started. Uh, so they're working on programming for the fall. So be on the lookout. There's a lot of exciting things that's going to go on and have a lot of great ideas and a lot of great programs that's going to come out this center. It's going to benefit the Frank Frankfurt community. That's wonderful. There's six classrooms in this building. Right, six. Six. And then with each classroom, there are three observation rooms. Right. Which is great because it allows college students, those that are in maybe um, nursing yes. or childhood development, yes. to come in and learn and see, you know, behavior and yes. learning outcomes. Yeah. So that's wonderful. It was wonderful. And, and the old Rosenwald, when I start when I was here that's what we did at the old world well we came and observed and did observations and had to write one page papers <laughs> so all of that it's really going to be beneficial to the students as well exactly now is this building primarily used for after school activities uh, it's going to be for after school teacher trainings uh, any type of program that deals with youth development uh, we're willing to partner with anybody in the community who, who, who focuses youth development. So it's going to be open to anything that deals with youth and youth development and programming related to youth. Well, Lewis, thank you so much thank for being you. on the show. We thank really you. appreciate you thank and you. all the information. You all stay tuned. When we come back, we'll hear from Frankfurt High School as they discuss Kentucky State's new early college program. Nineteen forty seven alumni graduate Moneta Sleep Jr. became the first African American to win the Pulitzer Prize for photography. He was awarded for a photo that he captured of Coretta Scott King at Martin Luther King Jr.'s funeral. I came to Kentucky State University. I could connect one-to-one -to, -one to all the professors. I could talk to them. I could share my problems and then ask for the solutions. After my undergrad degree in agriculture, I was looking forward to continue my studies. It's easy to communicate to everybody here. In Kentucky State University, I found a very friendly education system here. I always wanted to learn more about the agriculture system. It's a good thing about Kentucky State University.
Kentucky State University recently partnered with Frankfurt High School to create the Early College Program, giving high school students an opportunity to obtain college credit in agricultural science. Today we have Arlene Crabtree with Frankfurt High School as well as Sam Yoakum here to tell us a little bit about the program. So tell us about the Early College Program. The Early College Program actually came about, um, I would say, in March, they started talking about it. And basically what we were trying to do is create a partnership where incoming freshmen through you know, sophomore, junior, and senior could actually get college credit and potentially even graduate high school with an associate's degree. So it, that came about the dual credit situation. Um, we already had offerings of dual credit, which was basically math and English um, for some of the kids who had completed the upper end high school courses and they needed something else. And being a small district, you know, we're kind of limited to how many, you know, teachers we have and what we can offer. So out of that, with the um, early college program, we decided to do like a May term because we're on alternative schedule. And with the alternative schedule, state testing and things have to be done because the rest of the high schools are out, you know, at the end of May. So what we decided to do was like a May term. And the students that actually got to participate in the May term uh, dual credit course um, were students that were really close to being finished with their coursework or they had already finished their coursework. So basically it was an opportunity for them to participate in something they would not normally have access to. Now when you first heard about the program and that you would be putting things together to get the ball rolling, what were your initial thoughts? My initial thoughts was, oh my goodness, I have two weeks for this. <laughs> um, so yes, it, it was a whirlwind experience. Um, it was something that I was kind of handed and um, although I love agriculture, there's, I have nothing, you know, I grew up on a farm, it was fine. I didn't know the first thing about, you know, what to do with this. Um, but, you know, I worked with uh, Vince Maddox to start with, which he then got me in touch with Ashley Bates and uh, Dr. Sedlicek, and I couldn't ask for more support because they did a lot of the, the legwork for me. It was just a matter of them getting everything together for a, pr a class that they were going to offer in May that they wouldn't normally start until June. Um, so they were able to do that, and then I essentially made everything fit from the from the high school side as far as transportation and making sure the kids were where they needed to be when they needed to be there. So that's that's kind of how it went. Now is this the first program of its kind that Frankfurt High has participated in? Yes, ma'am. All right. Is. So tell me about some of the things that the students were able to gather from participating in the program. Um, it was kind of interesting to see because, like I said, I grew up on a farm, so I, you know, it wasn't culture shock for me, but it was kind of interesting to see because we had roughly about 70 students um, participating in, in the dual credit classes, and, um, you know, we would go to the farm or we would go to the um, aquaponics, aquaculture center, uh, we'd go to the ERC, um, different places, and I, things that I took for granted. You know, it was it was amazing to see. These were high school kids, and it was like, it literally was like something from another planet, you know, that they hadn't seen. And I think initially, I think a lot of them were, you know, just kind of standoffish, just like, oh, I don't want to do this, you know, and that kind of thing. And I think eventually, you know, they kind of come around to it. They're like, this is something that I would not have normally have even, you know, ventured out of. And it's, it's almost like they had never been off of a city sidewalk before kind of thing. So it, w it was a neat experience for them. Um, and, you know, they got to be around animals. They got to see where their food comes from. I'm not sure that that was a good thing initially because <laughs> most of them think it comes from the grocery store, you know. So I was like, yeah, but, it ha you know, and they got to see the ins and outs and really what goes into it. And I think it makes, it, makes them appreciate people more now that they, they've seen what actually has to happen in order to make things happen. Now, did you have a large number of students that had never been on a college campus before? Oh, we did. And what was their response or their reaction to it? I think their initial was like, wow, this place is huge. Because, you know, coming from Frankfurt High School, you know, most of them have been in Frankfurt Independent School since they were in kindergarten. So, really sheltered. You know, I think we have a population, you know, K through 12, we might have, you know, 1,000 to 1,100 kids total. And those students had been with each other the entire time. So, you know, they're really sheltered as far as, as you know, as far as that goes. 
Um, so I think stepping out onto a college campus and seeing that it is a bigger world out there, I think that was that was really good for them. Now, how long did the classes last, and were they here all day? No, uh, we started May the fifteenth, and we wrapped up on June the fifth. Um, so. Depending on where we were, uh, we would leave the building anywhere from 9 a.m. Uh, to 11 a.m. And then we had to be, because of transportation purposes, uh, we had to be back at Frankfurt High School by 1.30 in the afternoon. And then after the 1.30, you know, we would eat lunch and that kind of thing. Uh, but after that, the students would actually work on the projects that they wrapped up with um, June 4th and 5th. Now you mentioned projects, so students mm -hmm. not only had to complete their coursework, but they right. were also responsible for completing a project. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the project end of everything. Well, what they had to do is, and we kind of give them the autonomy to decide on what they wanted to do, um, from the, because of the platform that we use now, we do projects anyway, so they were aware of what you know the projects had to be or that kind of thing. So. Some of them chose to actually build models. Some of them did PowerPoint presentations, um, that sort of thing. So, depending on what they chose to do, you know, they worked in groups of, of two or three, and they spent. They had to draw those projects. They had to. The projects had to come from something that they had seen or learned while they were participating in the program. Now, Sam, you're a freshman mm -hmm. at Frankfurt High School. Tell us about your experience in the early college program. Uh. Being a freshman and being able to go to college campuses and take college classes is a like eye-opening experience. Because like being as young as I am, I don't think anybody else gets to experience like going to college campuses and taking classes with real professors and stuff like that. So, what's something that you learned? Kentucky State University, you know, we specialize in in research in pawpaw and also aquaculture. What's something that you learned in from one of those two disciplines? That. Uh, Aquaculture is one of the biggest ways that you can get your fish. Like if you go to the store and buy like tilapia, it is most likely grown on an aquaculture farm, which I had no idea of before I started this. Now you all got an opportunity to go to different places on campus, like our Environmental Educational Research Center. You all visited our aquaculture mm -hmm. facility as well as um, there's one other place that you all had an opportunity to go to the farm. Tell us about some of the hands-on activities that you all did while you were there. Uh, we went to the ERC and we did we did all this stuff. We uh, learned how they uh, surveyed their land. We um, went and went to the creek, saw all the all the spiders and stuff like that. Uh, we learned how to bore trees. So so you bore a tree, you can you can find out the age of a tree without cutting it down using a little tool that you drill into it and take a sample out and count the rings. Wonderful. You also got the opportunity to extract DNA from a strawberry. Yeah. How was that? It was interesting. I didn't know that that was a thing. I didn't know <laughs> strawberries had DNA. So, <laughs> If there was another student that wanted to participate in the program in the future, what would you tell them about your experience? Uh, you got to pay attention because <laughs> when, when you have to do that project, you're going to have to know what you're talking about because like, you don't want to look at the PowerPoint that you did to say everything. So you just got to know like off the top of your head that this is what you learned and this is what they told you about it. And why did you choose your project? Uh, I did I did aquaculture because I found that really interesting. Like I had no idea that that was a thing. So I chose aquaculture and uh, just it was really, really interesting. Do you think you'll pursue a degree in agriculture in the future? Uh, maybe surveying land. Like I'll, I love drones. So I might go into that part of it and help farms survey their land and stuff like that. That is wonderful. Well, thank you all so much for being on the show. Thank you all for tuning in. You can catch a KSU Gold every Monday at 8 o'clock p.m. on Cable 10 Television. Until then, stay tuned.